SP Tutors have collaborated with Anne Spear Publishing and John Cat Educational to create a mobile learning app, Tutor Know How. Tutor Know How places tutors in control of the time, place and pace of training. These live spotlight sessions form a key element of our specialist training, which will be linked to the Tutor Know How app. Devised and delivered by a range of expert practitioners from the SP Tutors Network, these sessions enhance tutors' evidence-informed practice, highlighting the best and most up-to-date research. In this session, we will introduce SP Tutors to the guiding principles for promoting positive behaviour in tutoring sessions. I will draw upon extensive experience teaching and leading in London and Suffolk mainstream secondary and special schools as SENCO, pastoral leader, senior leader and head teacher. And I'll be joined on the panel by Andy Samways, Director of Research School for the Unity Schools Partnership, part of the Education Endowment Foundation Research Schools Network, and also currently the Teaching Schools Council, EENEL Local Lead for the Teaching Schools of Suffolk. Welcome, Andy. Relationships between pupils, tutors, and the school are fundamental to achieving SP Tutors' vision to accelerate progress in children's learning, especially for those most disadvantaged by COVID-19 pandemic. SP Tutors' core values highlight the importance of relationships and connection. The guiding principles of our work are underpinned and informed by research evidence from the Education Endowment Foundation and the Research Schools Network on effective practices to address educational disadvantage. A key tenet of these principles is the focus on the positive relationships between tutors, pupils and their partner school. The connection between behaviour and relationships is explored in two sections in the core training on tutor know-how learning behaviours and teaching walkthroughs, positive behaviour. At SB Tutors, it's imperative that we have a shared understanding. Our tutors will be supporting pupils in a variety of school settings, from primary to secondary, special schools and alternative provisions. Tutors will have a range of experience with supporting pupils' behaviour and self-regulation. So let's begin by sharing some feedback. If you have a mobile phone or can minimise the screen, I'd like you now to please put in the following link. In, your, in the bar at the top, please type in polev.com forward slash the square peg 729. I'll pause for a moment whilst you type in the link polev.com forward slash the square peg 729. And when you type in that link, I'd like to, you to please take a moment to type in the words that you would associate with behaviour in schools. Just going to take a moment to share my screen. If I can just ask for permission to share the screen. Apologies, Lizzie, I'm just working on that in the background. I won't be a second. Thank you. If I can just ask you all to just take a moment to continue to input some of the words that you would associate with behaviour. And we'll just take another 20 seconds to just input some of those words. And whilst you can't all see the magic that's happening behind, some of those words that are coming in now include encouragement, fairness, happiness, responsive, discipline, expectations. Those are some of the words that you may be thinking about. I'm just going to have one more try. And it's often the way in these opportunities, the gremlins can strike. So we're gonna move on, but some of those opportunities that we might have 
um, or opportunities to discuss behavior may include humor, um, listening, the idea of being emotional, expectations, safety, um, encouraging others, fairness, respect. And one of the things that I will share with you and will email out to tutors is the, the most common words that have come up here, are those that appear on the word cloud, the biggest. And the biggest words that have come through here are three key words. And those are relationships, respect, and discipline. And what that's been able to share with, with me now and with all of us as a group is the idea that at SP tutors, the most important things at the moment that we would associate with behavior in schools are relationships, respect, and discipline. So moving on, it's clear that we all have different experiences and with this may have different strategies. So in this session, we're going to aim to share some common guiding principles to promote positive behavior in tutoring sessions. So we're going to begin by the first strategy, which is knowing our pupils. On tutor know-how in the school focus section, pupil context, you'll find key ideas to scaffold conversations with your key teacher. Finding out more about the pupils in your tutor sessions is key to building positive relationships and connections. And the idea there is to review the checklist and pupil context questions in this section. It's imperative that you learn pupils' names in advance of your first session, and certainly by the end of your first session. Make sure that if names are new to you, for example, if you haven't come across those names before, and if you're unsure of any pronunciation, check with the key teacher or ask the pupil. If you'd like to know more about a pupil's name, try asking the pupil about their story. Say to them, can you tell me a bit about your story? Don't forget to also introduce yourself to the pupils at the start of the session and make sure you please check with the key teacher how staff are addressed. Most schools like all staff to be addressed by surname. Learn about pupils' interests. What influences them? Ask the key teacher for a couple of insights in advance of your first tutoring session. Do pupils have a sport or extracurricular activity that they excel in or are passionate about? Something that you can use as a hook in lessons. Some pupils have got really fascinating or obscure hobbies such as ornithology, Personally, I was a young ornithologist when I was younger, or metal detecting, things that you can link in with tutoring to really grab their attention. It's crucial to know more about pupils' context with regard to special educational needs or key factors that will impact on pupils' ability to learn in your tutoring sessions. Do pupils normally wear glasses in your lessons? Are they a young carer? Do they have dyslexia? If pupils have an education, health and care plan or receive SEN support, you may need additional information from the Special Educational Needs Coordinator, also known as the SENCO, and the key teacher will be able to signpost you to this key information or to the relevant person in school. Pupils with an EHCP, which is the shortened version of an education, health and care plan, they will also have a one page profile. And that tells you how that pupil will learn best. When planning to promote positive behaviour, consider what do you need to know for your tutoring session to be successful? I'm now going to hand you over to Andy. Thanks, Lizzie, and really good to meet everyone today on the call and those that's viewing this recorded. I'm Andy Samways, as Lizzie's mentioned, Director of Unity Research School, and it's my pleasure to be here just to provide a brief input just to signpost towards an aspect about teaching pupils the how. To quote the Education Endowment Foundation guidance here, self-regulated learners are aware of their strengths and weaknesses and can motivate themselves to engage in and improve their learning. That really is something we should all be aspiring to, isn't it, and the gift of being a teacher or a tutor. As a tutor, you'll be supporting the development of a pupil's cognition, the mental processes involved in knowing understanding and learning. Strategies such as memorization or subject specific strategies for success, the bread and butter of great teaching. You will also be in a position to help pupils metacognition, the way they are as learners able to monitor and purposely direct their learning. Helping grow knowledge of themselves as a learner of strategies and of tasks 
is a really effective way of improving pupil outcomes. Working as a tutor, you're well placed to help pupils secure ever stronger relationships to learning by helping them become increasingly more aware of how to plan, monitor and evaluate their learning. For our pupils to self-regulate, we need to provide them with a structure and a framework within which they feel safe and secure. And as Lizzie said, relationships matter here. As tutors, we need to teach pupils the strategies and routines to become more self-regulating and more effective learners. These strategies must be taught explicitly and refreshed or rebooted as needed. We really do need to make the implicit explicit and we can do that through tutor talk. How we talk and how we model the use of plan, monitor and evaluate in our work can be highly effective here. Essential to your work as a tutor um, and achieved through precise planning, three aspects are really important here. The first one is about knowledge of task. Is the pupil absolutely clear what's required of them in their learning during the tutoring session? So knowledge of task is the first thing to make sure we're really clear on to help grow that relationship of safety and understanding. Secondly, knowledge of strategy. How secure are the strategies that could be employed by pupils to solve the problems you're setting? Have they seen the model before? And I'm sure many of you, if you're involved in teaching already, will have been aware of the I, we, you, the modeling of I'm going to do it first, then we'll do it together, then you're going to have a go at it yourself. That idea of transferring responsibility from tutor to pupil in that time. So the knowledge of strategy is the second piece. The third part about knowledge of self, to what extent is the pupil aware of their strengths, weaknesses, and how they approach their learning? So knowledge of task, strategy and self can really be very powerful in helping you plan how you, do, how you go through your sessions. Modelling and encouraging metacognitive talk is an easy and effective way to help grow self-regulation and habits. Well-timed use of open questions through tutoring sessions will help grow pupils' awareness of their learning. Simple questions might include before a task, is this similar to a previous task you've done? What is it you want to achieve? What could you do first? During the activity, you want, might want to be encouraging pupils to be considering, am I on the right tracks? What could I do differently? What questions can I ask to get help to help me understand this even more? And then after the session, what has gone well? What did I find most tricky? And what could I have done even better? So that idea of reflection before, during and after helps promote that metacognitive reflection. The Tutor Know How Core Workbook provides tutors with training in how to teach effective learning behaviours. This reduces the need to manage behaviour misbehaviour in tutoring sessions. Tutors can provide the conditions for learning behaviours to develop by ensuring pupils can access the curriculum, engage with lesson content and participate in their learning. Linking with the school, the key teacher and the teacher of the class is crucial in this, in this role. The Education Endowment Foundation recommends that tutors should encourage pupils to be self-reflective of their own behaviours. So tutors must be clear from the outset with pupils of their highest expectations for learning behaviours. Making these expectations explicit from the start of the first session. Behaviour policies for all schools are available on tutors partner school websites and it's crucial you see your work fitting alongside that of the school and complementing them. Tutors are guided to read these in the Tutor Know How app and ask any questions in dialogue with their key teacher. Tutors may choose to share the expectations at the start of every session on the slide or just actually in conversation checking in to identify the five key principles or five steps that's going to make sure this session is going to really make an add into their learning. Some tutors may choose to share as a group, char group charter, although take care here not to fall into the trap of negotiating your expectations and behaviour. Set the highest expectations in line with the school. The concept underlying this process is that as a tutor, you share the common goal with pupils reminding them that you're here to help them learn and help them progress.
Pupils and adults thrive on routine. Think about what's part of your morning routine when arriving at work or sitting at your desk in the morning. For me, it definitely revolves around saying hello to colleagues, whether that's by text or by looking across the room and waving at somebody. I check my email inbox and then I make sure I grab some caffeine in case the chance doesn't come up again that day. And if something happens upon arrival at work or upon sitting down at my desk that interrupts my flow, such as no Wi-Fi or the coffee machine's broken and my routine is interrupted, then my balance feels off for the whole day. And for pupils, a loss of routine can have the same impact. Pupils need to be taught your routines and they will seek comfort in this. And this will give you as the tutor freedom to take what we'd call safe risks with other aspects of their learning. Tom Bennett in Running the Room describes the five stages of building successful routines as dis design, describe, demonstrate, demand, and then disengage. And that's about taking the stabilizers off the training bike at the end. And as tutors now, I'd like you to think about the routines you want and need in your tutoring sessions. What do you want students and pupils to be able to do in order to succeed? What might be completely obvious to you won't be obvious to your pupils. And that's thinking about tiny micro behaviors. That's the idea of a thousand tiny behaviors that accumulate and build up to make good behavior. So what I'd like to do now is just in the chat function, type in what you would consider to be an assumed micro behavior. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Sit down, put your bag on the floor. So in the chat now, if you could just include a couple of micro behaviors, that'd be great. So we'll just take 30 seconds now to think about in the chat, what would some micro behaviors be? Just waiting for someone to be really brave. There's no right or wrong answers. So listen carefully. Some, listen to the speaker, perfect. Write clearly, write in the squares, exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, put the date on your work, exactly. Arrive on time, arrive prepared. So if we were to break that down into a micro behavior, what would arriving prepared look like for you as a tutor in your subject? Because being prepared for PE might be different for being prepared for a French lesson or being prepared for a maths lesson. So if you're tutoring mathematics, what would being prepared look like for you? Body language to show that you're listening. Absolutely. So a micro behavior, how would you show you're listening? So in my lessons, I would want student pupils to show that they're listening. What would they be doing as a micro behavior? If they're looking out the window, would they be showing they're listening? You might be listening, but how could they show? And in primary school, teachers are often very, very good at using micro behavior instructional language to get pupils to show that they are listening by doing different or by instructing micro behaviors. So looking at the screen, looking at the speaker, Sometimes at primary schools, often we can use micro behaviors to instruct this. Fantastic, a pleasant welcome greeting, excellent. So smiling, smiling at the teacher or smiling at the tutor and welcoming, excellent. So already someone's beat me to a question later on, which is look at the screen and mute your microphone, fantastic. So there's some wear advice and there's some really good ideas coming through here, lovely. So these are micro behaviors that build together to make good behavior in your classrooms. To avoid too many questions about your instructions, use simple, clear instructions. The less words, the better. So, excuse me, Johnny, um, would you mind when you've stopped chatting to Jim, Jimmy, kindly, um, sorry, how many times have I told you, would you mind closing your book and putting them inside your bag and zipping it up and popping it under your desk onto the floor? By the time you've gone through that full instruction, you know, Johnny's already legged it to the back of the room and is chatting now to Rosie. Instead, put your bag on the floor, please. Or I need you to put your bag on the floor. Clarity of instructions, the shorter, the better. 
No need to be rude. We're using the please, but absolute, the shorter, the better. Ensure that you're aware of the school's expectations for routine. Again, reading the school's behaviour policy must be a starting point. And this is available on your partner school's website. If you have any questions, speak to your key teacher. Teaching routines to your pupils is a key part of your sessions and must be taught explicitly to pupils. Routines can be reinforced through handouts in their books, a PowerPoint slide that you show at the start of every tutoring session, talk it through in discussions and lessons. To make sure pupils understand the routines, don't be afraid to demonstrate them, rehearse them until they understand. I don't mean practice lining up in corridors, but it may mean showing pupils your signal for quiet or your signal for transition between activities. The demand element that Tom Bennett describes links to sustaining high expectations of routines. In the same sense that we expect children to remember their pleas and thank yous, it's important we repeat and revisit our routines constantly and with consistency. Never negotiate and never let things slide. The disengage element is about allowing pupils a little bit of freedom, but only when the routines are fully established. And the aim here is about turning established routines into habits. So whilst the presence of routines is positive for all pupils, the absence of routines is keenly felt by neurodiverse pupils. This leads us on to our guiding principle four, when supporting pupils' positive behavior, behavior, one size never fits all. So take a step back, liaise with your key teacher, refresh your knowledge of the pupils each session as context changes and evolves rapidly for children, especially with the current context of working in schools during a pandemic. Observe pupils in your sessions and around school whenever you're there. Try not to impose on pupils what you think they need and use um, measure pupils' progress regularly with low stakes assessments and rely on evidence-informed practice. The Education Endowment Foundation advises using targeted approaches to meet the needs of individual pupils as universal behaviour systems are unlikely to meet the needs of all pupils. If you were tutoring pupils with complex special needs or more complex behavioural needs, please do liaise with the school for specific strategies. As we've already touched upon earlier in the presentation, your starting point must always be the pupil's individual education plan and or their educational health and care plan, also called their EHCP, and for pupils who are looked after or previously looked after by the local authority, these pupils will have a personal education plan, also called a PEP, which has targets and strategies to meet their individual needs. The key teacher or SENCO will be able to support you with accessing this information. The wider CPD library on tutor know-how offers a range of publications to enhance your knowledge on a range of SEND topics, including autism, attachment difficulties, and ADHD. Handing you over now to Andy. Our final guiding principle is a focus on relationships and connection. Positive relationships are key to the work of SP tutors, extending through the pupil to the relationships with the school and parents. Tutors have an absolute unique opportunity to work with pupils in small group and occasionally one-to-one -one settings. This will often be right now with pupils who've never experienced tutoring before. Positive relationships will grow from high expectations and these strong structures that we've been trying to highlight today. In the tutoring space, we maintain the tutor tutee relationship, ensuring that we hold the role of the adult in the room as warm authoritarian, caring deeply, and challenging directly. There's a quote that I've, has always stuck with me, and that's from Professor Dylan William. And it's something that he goes along the lines of, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. He attributed it to Theodore Roosevelt, but nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And that piece about that teaching is ideas conveyed through relationships, I think is so, so important at this stage. In the 
in what we do, we cannot think, therefore, that befriending the pupils will provide a suitable strategy for promoting positive behaviour. However, a good way to build positive relationships might be through using an approach, an evidence-informed approach, termed EMR, Establish, Maintain and Restore. This comes from work of Cook and Co in 2018 in, in America. If you wish to find out more about it, it's on page 13 of the EF Guidance Report on Improving Behaviour in Secondary Schools. But I'll just briefly highlight what it, in, in, it takes apart. It involves focusing intentionally on the pupils who want, you want to connect with. It provides a lens through which to view interactions. And if in this context, every interaction is an intervention. It's the work of Dr. Karen Treesman. Every interaction is an intervention. So everything we do has the power to influence. So the first part in, in, in the sequence is about establishing relationships. And as Lizzie's described earlier on, it is about whether that be at the very beginning of, a, of your sessions or your, your run of sessions, or actually absolutely in the beginning of every session. And that is communicate positively. Lizzie's mentioned using the names, knowing the names and knowing how to pronounce those names. If you're not sure, make sure you ask the pupil, how do you pronounce that name? Be affirmative, listen carefully, model that listening carefully and intently. Reference pupil responses in your feedback and be constructive in your feedback. Lizzie's already mentioned that piece about setting time to inquire about pupils' interests. That's that hook, that relationship. You have the challenge as a tutor to establish a, a relationship very quickly and for a short period of time for that pupil. But the, the more we can establish those positive relationships, the greater the opportunity for learning. So establish is the first part. Second part is about maintaining that relationship. There's some evidence around the five to one ratios of rationing of positive to negative interactions, making sure there's plenty of affirm affirmation and praise. Check in on how they are. The final part is about the restore and should you have a reason to, and this is, you know, this won't necessarily be, always be the case, but always remembering as the adults in the room to let go and start afresh. Every session is a new session. Reconnect, repair and restore. If you have to use the, that sort of approach, really linking with the school, the school behaviour policy, the school teacher, the key teacher, to make sure that relationships are secure and go forward in line with how that pupil is being supported at school anyway. So as reference in the maintain element of establish and restore, a key way to develop the positive relationships with pupils is through praise. But praise must be sincere. It's got to be proportionate and targeted. Before session one, make sure you read the school's re rewards policy and find out how they share praise about pupils' progress in their own teaching. So you can complement that in your own tutoring sessions. Where possible, discuss praise with the key teacher and find a way for the praise to be in the pupil's own currency. How would they like to be praised? How would they like to be recognised? Quietly, discreetly or with a certificate? or maybe some sticky. Find opportunities to praise your pupils, but make sure it's, that praise is meaningful and that pupils know they've earned it. It's not to be thrown around like confetti. It's there to make it count. And a key part here is how success and achievement fuels and reinforces motivation. Achievement leading to motivation rather than the other way around, motivation leading to achievement. So if we can hang on to that, the, the sense that achievement leads to motivation, low stakes assessments can provide regular and meaningful opportunities for pupils to achieve. Doing well at school is a better reward for most pupils than a sticker. Lastly, the final strategy for supporting relationships and connections is the most important. If we've exhausted all the techniques in our arsenal, the most important is to treat our duties and ourselves with kindness. When the pupil arrives at your tutoring session, try and imagine the day they might have had leading up to that moment. If they're a young carer, has their day started by caring for a parent, making breakfast for their sibling? If they have special educational needs, have they had difficulty locating the classroom? And are they anxious about what the lesson may be about or the session might be about? If they have English as an additional language, are they translating your instructions? Be minded to look beyond any label and any preconception that you might have for that tutee, that pupil. 
and consider what is the impact of the disadvantage they faced on learning. If we can consider what is the impact of the disadvantage on their learning, we can then help mitigate for this. And that's the gift we can provide day in as teachers and tutors. So thank you for those pieces and considering that, take a moment and always start with kindness. Thank you very much, Andy. So to recap, the SP Tutors five principles for promoting positive behaviour are to know your pupils, teach pupils the how of positive behaviour, routine, one size doesn't fit all when it comes to behaviour for our pupils, and a focus on relationships and connection. As next steps, take the time to explore your partner school's behaviour policy, and for more information, read through the resources on Tutor Know How. We're now going to move on to questions and answers. So many of you have kindly submitted some questions in advance of this session. Um, if you'd like to use the Q&A um, function at the bottom to submit any questions you have about um, positive behaviour in tutoring sessions with SP tutors, you're very welcome to do that now. Um, Andy and I are now going to answer some of the questions that have been submitted in advance of today's session. And I'm going to start off by um, posing one of the questions to Andy. How do I deal with a reluctant student who is stopping others from learning in one of my tutoring sessions? Andy. Thanks, Lizzie. Essentially, it's really key to make sure that you see yourself as a partner with the teacher and the school. So first and foremost, make sure you're having a conversation with the teacher and the key teacher of that class to make sure you understand the context that pupil's coming from. We've said about having high expectations. Set those high expectations and maintain those high expectations and communicate those with the teacher. If you're having issues with concentration or attention or any form of behavior that is not conducive to the context of tutoring, it's really important that you don't absorb that, but you very calmly, carefully make sure you refer that to the teacher at the school to make sure that the conditions are maintained for the others in the group who are requiring that attention. Thank you very much, Andy, that's great. The second question, what is the best preparation to do for the safeguarding certificate required to start working with SP tutors? Now, this isn't a test that anyone needs to revise for, please don't worry. Um, what I would say though, is if you would like to do some preparation for it, it sounds like whoever's asked that question is someone who likes to be prepared, is you may wish to um, have a look at keeping children safe in education, which is something you'll be required to read as part of your pre-employment checks anyway. So please have a look at the relevant sections of keeping children safe in education. And there is a, a specific part of that document that you'll be expected to read. It would also be helpful for you to have a look at your, if you've already been allocated to a school, you may wish to have a look at their safeguarding or child protection policy. If you haven't already been attached to a school, you may want to have a look um, at a school that either you went to as a child, or if you have children, maybe have a look at their school or your local school and have a look at their safeguarding policy or child protection document and have a read through one of those documents and to familiarize yourself with safeguarding policies. Um, you may also want to have a look at the NSPCC website to familiarize yourself with some of the terminology. The next question, how do you set fair class rules in the first term? Hopefully after today's session, you've got a better, a, a more thorough understanding of supporting positive behavior, but also in terms of setting rules, I think it's incredibly important as a starting point to be reading your school's uh, behavior policy. And as opposed to trying to establish standalone rules in your classroom, it's very, very important that anything that you do aligns with the school's behavior policy. So any conversations that you have, you really need to be having those discussions with the key teacher because it needs to reflect and enhance what's happening already in the school. Because what needs to happen is that you're able to get that support from the leaders in your school so that the pupils have consistency and you are working within the culture that's already been, been embedded in that school environment. 
Next question. Tips on managing behaviour when teaching a group of three online. Andy. Thanks, Lizzie. One of the key parts of schools partnership tutors is our commitment to face to face tutoring and that's been a real push from our perspective, but also from the national tutoring program that's that's for sure. But clearly we are aware of changing conditions and the necessity sometimes in the future to support online or remote tutoring. Should that be the case and without wanting to say very similar to what we said before it's really important that you go back to your key teacher and assess first of all what is the school's expectation on remote learning they will have established routines that the pupil is used to and it's really important that the nature of your tutoring if it's remote supports that and builds on that which they have had they will have their key processes and their safeguarding supported in that way but generally it's about connection it's really hard to connect to a screen but it's about being open to being connecting that way having your 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 um, camera on when you are speaking having your microphone on when pupils are not actually engaging in the conversation then having their microphone off and making sure that the clarity of a communication and instruction is really precise one thing we've found is the precision with which you have to give instruction over the course of a remote learning is greater than we might expect in face to face so hopefully when you're approaching any online tutoring number one make sure you're linking back to the school to understand their processes number two make sure that the pupils are really clear on what the activity is and how that's going to happen Thanks, Andy. And the last question we've got coming through um, previously is what are the main behavioural challenges tutors have to deal with? It's a really difficult one, isn't it, Lizzie? Because it's, it, it really is going into something with preconceptions really in that way, but therefore preparing your oneself to it, needing to establish relationships, I think is probably the best way about going into this. Rather than anticipating what might be happening, anticipate how you will establish those relationships from the very beginning. You are a very different person to the class teacher, I'd suggest. One is, you know, as a tutor, you're not the class teacher and every pupil is going to respond differently. But it might be that there's a reluctance to engage with a, a new person. It will very much depend on how the school have, de have supported the opportunity to tutor. But we are really hoping that schools are providing this as an opportunity for pupils, not a punishment. And therefore, it really should be a one about celebrating, saying, right, this is how we're going to approach things. This is how we're going to make the very best we can of these 15 sessions that we're going to be working together. That affirmation in that way. It's about making sure that we remain open minded. This might be the one time that that pupil has the opportunity to really engage like this. And being consistent and being fair in that way to make sure that the encouragement and the motivation comes from the achievement in the session is really important. And going back to it never underestimate the quality of a conversation that is about kindness and care. Thank you. We've got a last question coming in. Environment can have a big impact on behaviour. What guidance has been given to schools with regards to the space that they'll make available for tutors to work in? For example, a corridor, space within a classroom or an empty classroom, for etc. Now I can, I think Andy and I will probably answer this one together. I think schools are being given um are some some schools are working with tutors that have already been working in their schools for some time and some tutors are being allocated to brand new relationships with schools um so schools are um, being given um autonomy to work with their tutors but there will also be an expectation that tutors have a safe environment to work in so that tutors tutees have an opportunity to thrive and learn effectively within those environments and of course, as, as guests coming into work in those schools, they will also be working within the, the same COVID risk assessments as the teachers and the pupils will be working under as well. And as you can imagine, um, trying to tutor three pupils in a corridor would not be an effective space for learning. And so there will be obviously guidance and there will also be best practice that we will be sharing with schools around how we can have the, the, the most conducive opportunities for learning as well. And if there is a situation where tutors are going into schools and there isn't an appropriate environment for learning, there's an opportunity as a first point of contact for the tutor to have that conversation with their key teacher, who's their constant point of contact, 
but also tutors will have an allocated member of staff, a member of staff or a member of the SP tutors team who they can contact to have that conversation with the SP tutors as well. I'd agree, Lizzie, and I think what we all know from schools at the moment, schools have to adapt, they have to modify and respond to ever changing situations. What we do know is that schools stepping into this are wanting the very best for their pupils and those pupils who've been disadvantaged by the COVID situation in particular. So I think, as Lizzie said, if you are if you're not particularly convinced that the space you have been provided is the best in the knowledge of what you can see around you, carefully ask the question, might there be an, a, a, a place, a space that is more conducive to the learning? However, we do know that schools are having to be very creative with the use of space and respecting all that a school is doing is fundamental within this as well. It's in the clue, yeah, schools, partnership, tutors. It's about a partnership and it's seeking to respond and find ways around a situation that none of us ever anticipated we'd be in. But fundamentally, the gift that this tutoring provides is real opportunity to support those pupils and their learning going forward. Thank you. So lastly, to continue the conversation um, with SP tutors, um, please do keep in touch with us um, on social media. You can keep in touch with us on Twitter or on Instagram. And of course, you can email us at the contact hyphen us at sptutors.co.uk. And thank you for joining us at this spotlight session. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at our next training event in January. And thank you very much for joining us.